So I've titled today's message, Three Operating Pin Principles of Thanksgiving. And I know it sounds like a strange message, but or a title, but bear with me. I'll explain in, in just a second. But, um, but yes, as many of you know, um, in just a few short days, millions of Americans all over this country, maybe even some in different countries, Americans in different countries, are going to be celebrating uh, Thanksgiving Day in their traditional manner. Now, I've been living here in El Paso now for 15 years, 15 years, and I've seen the different ways people celebrate uh, Thanksgiving Day. I've been a part of it. Um, but, you know, something I've noticed that usually consists of something of the following. Um, for many, it's, you know, begins with an early morning friendly football game with old friends or coworkers. Um, well, you know, some will also go afterwards, some will go out to the uh, Thanksgiving Sun Bowl Parade, and, or others will just stay and watch the, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on TV. And around mid-afternoon, that's when things kind of pick up a little bit. I, I, you know, all of El Paso completely shuts down because it's time for the Cowboys game. And so while that's happening, Someone is already in the kitchen with tears in their eyes because they've been chopping onions, preparing the, uh, the meal. Then, you know, there's the official gathering at the dinner table or kitchen table, whatever you want to call it, and there with friends and family and um, with loved ones, you know, you celebrate a meal together. Um, now, uh, afterwards, to the, you go to the movies or you watch a movie at home or, or maybe take a nap, you know, until it's time to do that Black Friday shopping. Now, real quickly, in, in my house, you know, before we eat, before we actually eat dinner, whoever's there at the kitchen table, whether it's uh, a guest, a family member, any, any, like all of us, we all take turns praying and, and just thanking God. You know, all of us will take turns thanking God for um, his blessings or ways that he's maybe personally blessed us over the past year. We then eat, and then afterwards we, Robin, make sure that the chores are distributed because she cooked all day, all morning. But... The best part is afterwards because then we get into a, a really comfortable position to prepare for that inevitable coma, that turkey coma that's going to come. And so we, that's pretty much what we do. Now, I know many of you probably do different things. Now, I, you know, again, that's just us. Uh, you have your own traditions. But I certainly hope that you're at least taking some time, whether it's during the day, whether it's during dinner, to thank God for all that he's done for you and for all that he's given you this past year. As hard as it may be or all the trials that you've gone through, um, he has blessed you in many ways. And so at least, you know, again, acknowledge him, thank him, and, uh, and praise his name for just the, the goodness, for being so good to you. Um, now, I know this is going to sound silly, but the other day I was at work and, you know, I was thinking of this message and I was thinking of things I was thankful for. And one of the many things I found myself being thankful for is for the technology that we have readily available to us. I was also, you know, thankful that God had given man the ability to create, to have these ideas and to create and to innovate, uh, you know, and, and to invent these useful tools that are, have benefited all mankind. In Exodus 35, 35, we're told, he, uh, speaking of God, has failed them 
with skill to do all the work of, gem, of a gem cutter, a designer, an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, and a weaver. They can do every kind of craft and design, and every, and design, artistic design. <coughs> so we know there that God has given man the ability to create and to invent and to do these, have these skills uh, to be able to make things better for, for people. Now, although this was back then during the Exodus, God is still doing this. And I'll give you, you know, some examples. In the, 50 cent in the 15th century, it was the printing press, Gutenberg's printing press. You know, I can think of uh, um, the Wright brothers with the airplane. Um, in the early 2000s, you know, think about everything that Steve Jobs brought forth, you know, uh, the iPhone in particular, that changed a lot of lives, changed a lot of ways we communicate, a lot of ways we, we do things. And today, many have said that it's this, the new big innovator, the new big mind, the inventor is Elon Musk. You know, he wants to send people to, the, to Mars. He has this vision of you know, sending people to Mars. Um, and with his Tesla cars, his electronic vehicles. And so, you know, we'll, we'll see what comes with that. But again, these things have changed mankind and has benefited us in so many ways. And I was thankful for that. Now, yes, has technology been used or can it be used for evil purposes? Absolutely, yes. But it's also being used for good, for the glory of God. For example, I use my laptop, I use my tablet here, and I use my phone to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to send these messages uh, out into the YouTube and you know, wherever it goes, it goes. Um, you know, these things can be used for many good and great things that will glorify God. None of this would have been possible if God hadn't given mankind the mind to come up with these brilliant ideas and to create, to create them. Now, here's something I also thought about. There's something in all these devices that we have. Um, uh, they need something in these devices for them to be useful because this tablet would just be a, a paper holder, paperweight, if it wasn't for something that's in, this, in these devices, in our computers. Do you know what that might be? Now, um, if you don't, it's okay. Um, let me ask this question then. What do all of these have in common? Microsoft Windows, Apple, iOS, Android OS, and the Linux operating system. Well, all of them are computer operating systems that enable your computers to work, your apps in your, com in your tablets, in your devices to, to work properly. Um, and in order for them to be a blessing to you, because without these operating systems, you know, it's, again, it's just a paperweight. Well, with Thanksgiving just a few days away, today I want to share with you three operating principles of Thanksgiving. By the end of this message, you're going to be, you want to learn a unique practical application for each one of these operating principles. And you're also going to discover that these applications will enable these operating principles of Thanksgiving to become a blessing in your life. So um, I want you to listen closely because Thanksgiving is more than a holiday that falls in the fourth Thursday of every November. It's meant to be a way of life for a child of God. Now, all three of these operating principles of Thanksgiving and their practical applications are found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and that's where we're going to be this morning. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm going to be reading just two verses, uh, verses 16 through 18. Three verses. And there, 
the Word of God says. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The first operating principle of thanksgiving is this. Thanksgiving is appropriate to every, circ every circumstance of daily life. In verse 18, it says, Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. The words, give thanks, are a command. They say that thanksgiving is God's plan for your life. Moreover, this command is in a Greek tense, in its Greek tense meaning, uh, keep on giving thanks in every situation, every occasion, and every circumstance. Now notice that this verse, it doesn't say there, give thanks for all circumstances. Instead, it says, give thanks in all circumstances. Now why can you give thanks in every circumstance? Because God will use every circumstance, whether it's good or bad, for the good of those who are his children through Jesus Christ. Two women met on a college campus during an alumni gathering. They hadn't seen each other for a few years, and the conversation went something like this. I've gotten married since we last met. Oh, that's good. Well, I don't know about that. My husband is twice as old as I am. Oh, that's bad. Well, I don't know about that. He's worth $100 million. Oh, that's good. Well, I don't know about that. He won't give me a cent. Oh, that's bad. Well, I don't know about that. He did, he did give me a $5 million house. Oh, that's good. Well, I don't know about that. He burned, he, it burned down last week. Oh, that's bad. Well, I don't know about that. He was in the house. Oh, that's... You see, sometimes you don't know whether something is good or bad. But one thing is for sure. You can always be thankful that God is working for our good in everything. In everything. The greatest example of that is... The cross of Jesus where in the depth of our sin, guilt, and rebellion against God, God was bringing the good of redemption and reconciliation for all who would trust in Christ. We're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them. We can all, you can also give thanks in every circumstance because God will use that circumstance, whether, again, it's good or bad, for your good, to bring good into your life. In Genesis chapter 5, verses 19 and 20, Joseph said this, Joseph said to his brothers, after they had done some pretty horrible things to him, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You planned evil against me. God planned it for good to bring about the present result, the survival of many people. So, the first operating principle of thanksgiving thanks is this thanksgiving is appropriate to every circumstance in daily life so now let me tell you what the practical application is of this first operating principle trust and by that i mean trust god you can't be a thankful person if you're not a trusting person However, if you're willing to trust God in a circumstance, even if you can't sort out the good circumstances from the bad, then you'll be able to be thankful. You'll be able to be a thankful person. You know that God is working for your good. 
Where are you struggling to trust God today? What situation or circumstance have you gone through or are going through? Or are you thinking about going through? In which you are doubting God to do work for your good. Well, now it's the time for you to say, especially if you're a believer, God, I'm going to trust you to bring good that you promised in this circumstance. During that Thanksgiving meal, just pray that, or beforehand, or throughout the day. It doesn't have to just be on Thursday. It could be any day. Keep that in mind. Pray that, God, I'm going to trust you to bring about good you promised in this circumstance. Remember that you're his child, and he wants nothing but good for you. Thus, my friends, thanksgiving is appropriate, is appropriate to every circumstance of daily life. So trust. So now that you know what the first operating principle of thanksgiving is and its practical application, let me now share with you the next one. The second operating principle of thanksgiving goes this way. Thanksgiving can abound in any aspect of human life. Thanksgiving can abound in any aspect of human life. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 and 7 says, So then, just as, you, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in Him, being rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, and overflowing with gratitude. Some translations will say thankfulness. If you're a follower of Christ, if you're a believer in born-again believer, God calls you. God calls you to be thankful. And guess what? God will never call you to be or to do something that he doesn't also give you the power, the resources, and the ability to do. The God who calls you to thanksgiving has a way to cause that thanksgiving to abound in your heart and in your life. That's what's, what's that way, you may be asking? Well, it's there that the second, the second uh, practical application of thanksgiving is found. Thanksgiving can abound in any aspect of human life. So pray. Pray. Right before God says, or it says in verse 18 in our passage, give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It says in verse 17, pray continually. Thus, a thankful life is the result of a prayerful, prayerful life. A life of continual prayer. So pray at all times and in every occasion. That's the key to a thankful life. When President George Washington, the first president of the United States, issued the first Thanksgiving Day proclamation in 1789, he began the proclamation with these words. Whereas it is a duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal f uh, favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government, government for their safety and happiness. 
Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th of November, next to be devoted by the people of these United States to the service of the great and glorious being who is the bene bene uh, beneficent, ben beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that may be, that we may be, that we then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the Lord and ruler of the nations. That's what the first president declared. I'd like to see one day a future president be able to write words like that. This here shows us that George Washington, our first president, understood that the key to a thankful life is a prayerful life. As Colossians chapter 4 verse 2 says, devote yourselves to prayer, stay alert in it with thanksgiving. If you want thanksgiving to abound in every aspect of your life, spend Therefore, spend more time in prayer. Pour your heart out to him. Seek him in your struggles. Acknowledge him in your victories. Remind yourself of the words Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything, but in everything. Through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. All right. Just to go over what we covered so far, the first operating principle and practical application was this. Thanksgiving is appropriate to every circumstance of daily life. So trust. The second operating principle that we just covered was uh, uh, Thanksgiving um, sorry, uh, Thanksgiving can abound in every, in any aspect of human life. So pray. So now this brings us to the third and final application of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, brothers and sisters in Christ, will activate the joy of the Christian life. Verses, verse 16 of our passage says, Rejoice always. Joy is what, is what the kingdom of God, his rule, his reign in our life is all about. Paul said so in Romans chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. Do not let your good be slandered. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what the kingdom of God is. So you see, thanksgiving will activate the joy of the Christian life. And so here's the third practical application of thanksgiving. Praise. Joyfulness. Rejoicing. They're all synonymous. Every day, every single one of you have a choice to make. The choice is whether you're going to praise God amid your problems, amid your difficulties, amid your obstacles, amid the storm in your life, or throw a fit when it happens. Throw a tantrum, pout in the midst of it. But let me tell you this, if you're prone to do that, there will always be plenty of things in this life to throw a fit about, to pout about. But if you do, if that's all you do, you're going to miss out. Miss out on what, you may be asking. You're going to miss out on the joy of the Christian life. Listen carefully to the words of 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. 
so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This scripture assures us that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So you see, when you have Jesus Christ in your life, you have all the reason in the world to praise and to not throw a fit. The Apostle Paul put it this way in, again, Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. But in everything that was, but everything that was a gain to me, I have considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them as dung. If you don't know what dung is, it's, it's poop. And consider them as dung so that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. So great, so amazing is the treasure of knowing Christ Jesus as your Savior that everything else you would uh, that everything else that you would thank God for this Thanksgiving, whether it's family, friends, the food you ha you've eaten, the clothing you're wearing, the, uh, the shelter that you're under, all of it, all that is rubbish. All that is dung. All that is poop compared to knowing Jesus. Yes, don't get me wrong. We ought to be thankful for those things. Yes, be thankful for the food that's on your table. Be thankful for the, you know, for the house that you have, the clothing that you're wearing, the, the, the tablet that you have, the computer, the TV that you're watching the football game. And yeah, be thankful for those things. But remember that all those things are temporary truth is this, all that stuff, and yes, even, I know we don't like to think about it, even those that we love are going to pass away. All that's going to pass away eventually. But this is true. And this is what you need to hold on to. When all that stuff is gone, when all those loved ones, all those people that you're sitting around the table are gone, I mean, you know, we, my wife and I, two of our boys are gone. They're not going to be with us at Thanksgiving. They're in California. We know they're safe and, and all that. But, you know, as my daughter gets older one day, she's going to have her own family. She's going to have her own, you know, traditions and Thanksgiving and, and all that. And, and who knows, maybe one day I'll, I'll be at Denny's having dinner, Thanksgiving dinner by myself. You know, I don't know. But in the end, again, what, this, is, this is what I hold on to. When all that stuff is gone, when all those people are gone, I, you, will still have Christ. And that means that you have every reason in the world to praise God. That ought to give you every single reason in the world to praise God because no matter what, the lose everything if you will always have Christ as a believer, as a child of God if you're born again you will always have Christ Christ will always be in you the Holy Spirit will be dwelling in your heart forever you can learn a lesson from an immigrant shopkeeper who's Adult son came to him one day. He said, Dad, your accounts payable 
uh, Dad, you keep your accounts payable in a cigar box, your accounts receivable in a spindle, and all your cash in the register. You don't even know what your profits are. The father replied, Son, when I came to this country, all I had was a pair of pants. Today I have your sister. Today your sister is an art teacher. Your brother is a lawyer. You're a CPA. Your mother and I own a house, a car, and a shop. Add it all up. Subtract the pants. And praise God, there's your profit. Now there's a man choosing to praise instead of pout. Small wonder that the joy of the Christian life had been activated in his life. Even, again, if the world has been crumbling in around you, do you still have the joy of the Lord? Can you still see the beauty, the blessings, the wonders of God? Can you still look back and remember who you were before Christ redeemed you and still get those goosebumps and say, oh, Jesus died for me. Even though I did that one thing or I said that one thing or I hurt that one person or God forgave me. Jesus died for me even though I did that. He died to forgive me of my sins. How do I give you joy? I give you joy that one day you'll be with him for all of eternity, forever. So there you have it, the three operating principles of thanksgiving and their, and their practical application. I'll go over them one more time. Thanksgiving is appropriate to every circumstance of daily life, so trust. Thanksgiving can abound in every aspect of human life, so pray. Thanksgiving will activate the joy of the Christian life. So praise this church, brothers and sisters, is what will enable thanksgiving to be a blessing to all of you. Let me read again today's passage. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This Thanksgiving in a few days, remember those three operating principles. Keep those close at heart. And as I said earlier, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but every day. Trust Him. Pray. Praise Him. That will show how thankful you are how truly thankful you are. And you don't have to be an adult. You, just, you, could do this. You, you young men and women that are here, you can do that too. Just be thankful. You have your parents, you have your friends. You know, we were having this conversation with Robin the other night and she said, you better not fall apart. I think you said, better not fall apart. Something was going to happen to me, right? You know, um, because she knows that I have this certain type of personality where I could. I was kind of just playing with her. I said, oh, the first place I'm going to is here or there. I don't know. You know, but in reality, I, I know where she'll be. And I know I'm going to see her one day. And I, I just be holding on to that. I'm going to be holding on to that. And that brings me joy. That even when she breathes her last, it's not going to be the last time. She's going to be with the Lord. And one day I'm going to see her again. You may not be in the same capacity as husband and wife. But she will be up there with me. So, you know, I, I, 
I don't want to say again, I, I, I'm confident that I'll be okay. I'll be okay, Rob. I'll be okay, you know, because of the joy of the Lord. Because I trust Him. And as, and as I, I, and if I constantly, continually stay in, in, in prayer or are, am in prayer, I, I know that, again, the likelihood of me doing something crazy, you know, isn't there. So, I'm thankful, you know. This Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for all of you. I'm going to be thankful for my family. I'm going to be thankful for this church. I'm going to be thankful for all he's done. You know, every year I'm, I'm, by the time, the end of the year, I'm in shock that we're still have, we still have our doors open. People start coming and new people are coming and, you know, many of you haven't gotten tired of my corny jokes and, you know, and my, you know, weird personality. You guys are still coming and, you know, again, that goes to show that it's not necessarily me, but it's the word of God. You know, I'm not, you know, up here to put on a concert or put on motivational or be a motivation, motivational speaker. You know, I just want to give you the word of God. And so, you know, I am thankful and I will always be thankful. And um, that's what I'm going to be rejoicing about this upcoming week. Now, before I close, I want to just take a moment um, to talk to those who are maybe watching, listening who haven't yet placed their trust. You know, one of those key principles, place their, or applications here, trust, haven't placed their trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Are you still hesitant? Are you still not sure? Well, uh, let me tell you this. Regardless of what you think or how you feel, the fact is that Jesus died, came, and died for you. He suffered, was tortured, was beaten up, his, his beard was pulled. I can't, you know, I have a little bit of here, I can't imagine. You know, he was whipped. Man, he, kinds of horrible things happened to him. And he was placed on the cross. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. And what did he say when he was hanging on that cross? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. <coughs> so now I'm telling you, that's what he did for you. Will you accept God's free gift of forgiveness? Will you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior so that he may give you eternal life so that you can have that joy that you've been longing for your entire life? Don't reject this call. Don't reject this moment because you may not have another. This may be your last opportunity. Because you don't know the day or the hour. So, if you haven't yet done so, you haven't yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you'd like to, I want to invite you to the cross. I want you to come to the cross and lay your sins before Him and accept Him. And I want to lead you in a prayer to accept Him. So, wherever you're at, I want you to close your eyes and bow your head and and really pray this prayer with all your heart with all sincerity Lord Jesus I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness I believe you died for my sins and rose from the grave I now turn from my sins and confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Now fill me with the Holy Spirit so that he may help guide me, teach me, 
show me more about the Father, more about you, more about him, himself, Lord, in my new born again life. In your name, amen. If you prayed that, I want to welcome you to the family of God. You're now my brother and sister in Christ. And one day I'll be rejoicing with you. And I'm rejoicing with you now, and I'll be rejoicing with you when I see you in heaven, if I don't meet you here or talk to you personally. But I want to welcome you. It's a great day. Now, when you're having dinner with your friends and family, or by yourself, um, it's okay. The Lord is with you. He's with you now. You're never alone. So let us know. We want to maybe uh, talk to you a little bit more, maybe uh, kind of help you out in your next steps of the Christian walk. Um, want to know what, how we can minister to you. So uh, get a hold of us through our website or through Facebook, YouTube, one of our social media pages. Um, we want to hear more about you. We want to hear your story. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a great and amazing Thanksgiving. Um, be safe. Don't eat too much. Um, you eat well, but don't eat too much. You want to be careful about that. Um, you don't want to spend days too many days in a coma, there in that food coma. But um, we hope to see you again next uh, week. And uh, we look forward to you joining us. Thank you. We love you. We'll talk to you soon. Or we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much for visiting us here at Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel. We hope we were blessed by Pastor Angel's message. For more information about Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel, such as our service time or how to get connected, please visit our website at fvccelp.com. If the Lord is leading you to give to the ministry of Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel, there's a PayPal link in the video description below. Once again, thank you so much for visiting us here at Fresh Vision Calvary Chapel. We hope to see you again soon.